Hello, welcome to Segment Geo Special. In this video, I'm going to show you how to segment satellite imagery using the uh, segment NEC model uh, with just a couple lines of code. First, go to the website samgeo.gshub.org. Uh, you uh, the link is also in the description. And once you're here, uh, you can, if you want, you can read the description. So uh, basically, this uh, package show you uh, allows you to segment satellite imagery uh, pretty much anywhere using any uh, satellite base maps. And so originally, uh, the uh, the package was uh, inspired by the segment anything EO uh, repo by uh, Alessandro Hanker Renka. And so I built on top of uh, his uh, source code and uh, developed in uh, uh, Python package. I also <clears throat> improve a lot uh, and also provide notebook for you to uh, try it out. So you are welcome to go through the documentation. So the package allows you to download a map type from uh, Thai map services and <clears throat> create a GeoTIF. Then we can use the GeoTIF to uh, do segmentation using the uh, segment anything model. Then uh, you can save the result, also the annotation as uh, GeoTIF or also vector data format. I also provide a couple ways for you to visualize the result on uh, interactive map or you can use a slider so here are some examples uh, the package is still under active development and here is a demo so for example after you do the segmentation you can create this kind of uh, colorful uh, basically random color segmentation image and then can overlay on top of the original image to see what it looks like um, so first uh, let's go to uh, if you want you can try uh, you can install this one on your computer but uh, it will require GPU, so if you only have CPU, it's going to be pretty slow. So I recommend that you come here and then examples. Right now we have three examples and uh, it's still being developed. Uh, I would like in this tutorial, I would like to try you uh, show you the automatic uh, mass generator. So this is a new notebook that I just added uh, yesterday. Um, if you want, you can scroll down. You can take a look at uh, the notebooks uh, here. It's pretty simple and. Uh, Straightforward. So next, I'm going to show you how we can get started. Click the open uh, in Google Collab icon to open this one in Google Collab. You need to make sure that you log into your Gmail account. Once you're here, uh, the first step, make sure that you change the runtime. So you're going to click the runtime and then change runtime type. Change this one to GPU. Uh, don't use the CPU. Yeah, it's very slow. So once you click save, uh, you can check it out and you can upper right corner here. You can click to connect. Or you can run any source code, it's automatically connect this one to a GPU instance. And okay, so once it's done, now we can first we need to install the packages. So we need the segment geospatial, the leaf map, and the local type server uh, for visualizing uh, images on interactive map. It also allow you to, for example, visualize the base map. So uncommon control slash on your keyboard, and then just run this one, run anyway. It should run this one and install all the necessary dependencies. It should take a minute or two uh, because this one, if, especially if you're on your local computer trying to install, it's going to install PyTorch. And uh, if you have CUDA on your computer, it's going to install the GPU version. So it might take some time. Upper right, upper right corner here, you can also see the RAM. Uh, basically, because this is a GPU instance, uh, we have the RAM uh, almost um, 13 gigabyte. We also have the GPU RAM. I think it's about like 16 gigabyte. Also, you have the disk. And so later, when we are uh, when we are running the notebook uh, using the GPU, uh, you will see the GPU uh, uptick in here. Okay, it's done. Then we can uh, make sure that everything uh, installed successfully. Then we can comment out the uh, check this uncheck this one. So next, let's import the libraries. Uh, so it's uh, after you install the segment geospatial, it's going to create uh, under your site packages. It's going to call same geo, and then this is the same geo class. They were going to use segment imagery, and there are also a couple of other functions allow you to download images, download files, and also uh, visualize the images. So just import the libraries. Uh, it should be uh, a few seconds. And once you uh, import the libraries, then we can create a map. So we're going to use the leaf map. If you want need more information about leaf map, you can go to the website leafmap.org, and then you should be able to find more information. Uh, information here. I have a tons of tutorials showing you uh, how to. Uh, do a uh, uh, data visualization uh, using geospatial data. So let's go back to here. First, let's uh, create the interactive map. So as you can see here, we're going to create a map and then center around the latitude and longitude 
Also the zoom label, you can set the height, basically the map height here. And then we add the satellite base map. Uh, but this one you can essentially use any base map you like. Right now we're just using the uh, satellite base map. So this is the Google satellite base map without the label. And the area here uh, is around UC uh, Berkeley. So if you are familiar with the campus, this is what it looks like. And what we're going to do is to download the imagery uh, in this area. And then we can um, do the segmentation. Again, if you want, you can click this icon here uh, and then you can change the base map if you want. So if you click the base map icon, this one shows you a tons of base map. So we are using this satellite base map here. Oops, uh, I think there's a bug here. I might need to or duplicate um, because I already added. that. So let me do it again. Um, I think I need to fix the error. So uh, if you uncomma out, for example, uncomma out this one and then uh, this is right now by default is the open stream app. So now if I change this one here, oops, uh, you, of course you can turn the, turn the layer on and off. And so let me uncheck this one, click here. And so here I can change the setup base map. Uh, you will see here and um, there are tons of other base maps. So you can use, for example, Esri uh, base map, uh, Esri wall imagery, for example. Uh, as long as you have any imagery, you can use it. So in this case, we're going to use the satellite base map <laughs> and scroll down here. Um, so it depends on what area you want to use. Uh, you can use the uh, the rectangle that I'm specifying. So if you don't draw anything, uh, I'm going to use this area around uh, UC Berkeley, but you're welcome to uh, select any area you like. So here, whoops, uh, it's a big bucky here. And how about this? So I'm going to maybe center around this area. And then uh, let me zoom out a little bit. Okay. So here I can draw a rectangle anywhere you like. So for example, I'm going to draw an area here. Okay. And again, you can zoom to anywhere you like. Once you zoom, uh, select the area, and then it's going to you uh, get the bounding box. So the bounding box is using this one here, M dot user R Y uh, bounce. If you want, you can actually look at the coordinate. So if I run this one. You will see this is uh, the uh, low left corner, right? Uh, west, south, north, uh, uh, east, north, right? So this is the bounding box. With this uh, bounding box, then we can download the imagery using the TMS to GeoTIFF. So this one basically download all the map types and then mosaic them as a single raster imagery. So I'll just run this one. And the source, this one is basically the base map. So it's the satellite base map, but you're welcome to use any other base map that I show you in the drop down list. You can set the zoom level, the large of the number, uh, the uh, large of the file size. So you don't want to like make it too big because um, you might not have enough GPU to run the uh, segmentation. Uh, if you have any local images, so you can also use uh, specify the file path to your local file uh, image uh, GOT uh, if you want. So once we have this, then we can load the uh, imagery to the map. So here we're going to basically uh, map layers negative one means the 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 layer the satellite base map layer um and we're going to turn it to force basically with an, a hide layer and then we use the m dot egg raster so this is the imagery like we just download it and also the layer name so you can take a look at upper right corner here this is going to show you uh, the imagery right so this is the base map um if you want let me clear the uh, ri right now you can see this is the imagery we just downloaded and this is the satellite base map, right? So behind the scene. And this one uh, is the GeoTIFF. It's geo reference because you can see it's actually overlay on top of the map. So the location is correct. And so this is like go beyond the original segmentation model that's only for uh, regular images. Now we are doing that for uh, satellite images. There might be some, yeah, sometimes it doesn't show up. Uh, you can run it again if you want to. So once we have that, uh, then we can download the um, we can start doing the segmentation, but first we need to download the so-called checkpoint. So the checkpoint is basically the model, and we have all the uh, uh, model, <coughs> excuse me, the model parameters, and you can download this one to your computer. So here we want to download to the downloads directory, but uh, since we are running in Google Colab, I can just simply, we can download this one to here. So what we can do maybe is just simply use, um, you can uncomment this one. If you're running on local computer, uh, you, you are welcome to customize the file pass. I can just remove all of this. So this means that it's going to just download this one to my current working directory. Uh, so the checkpoint, we're going to, there are multiple checkpoints. Uh, if you want, you can take a look at the help documentation. 
for this one, we're just going to use the first uh, model type and then the checkpoint. We are going to use all the um, default same parameters. And so you can see the model is 2.56 gigabyte. It's pretty big. So if you're using that on your local computer, it might take some time to download. On Google Collect, uh, Collect it's pretty fast. So you should download this one to the current directory here. Once we have the model, then we can just hold the model. So you see here on the left side, with the model, and then we initialize. Uh, once we initialize, then we can start running the segmentation. So uh, the function you need to use is segment, uh, same dot generate. Okay, because this is right now we have this class. This is the uh, initiate the instance. And then we run the generate function. So the generate function here, if you hover your mouse on the function name, you will see the documentation, right? The source, basically the image you want to do the segmentation. And then you can say the output, uh, the foreground means by default, the segmentation model, you're going to segment everything. So you're going to have all the objects cover the entire image. If you just want some foreground, um, it's not always going to be accurate, but uh, it's pretty uh, accurate, uh, uh, decent. So for example, if you just want building trees and other stuff, you want to remove the background, then you set this one by default to two. Bet means if the image is sometimes too big, um, it doesn't fit into the memory, you can uh, set the base to Two, then it's going to uh, subdivide the uh, large image into smaller pieces and then do the segmentation on each individual one. We also have the uh, erosion model, uh, erosion kernel, kernel. So basically, after you do the segmentation, sometimes if it's too noisy, you want to extract the borders, then you might want to set an erosion kernel, something like this, three by three, five by five. So basically do the erosion and then, so the objects uh, become smaller. So then you see, you're going to have the, the boundary. Mass multiplier means that by default, it's going to segment the image into uh, binary. So it's going to be zero and one. And sometimes if you want to, for example, visualize that, usually it's going to be RGB. So it's going to, for example, if you multiply by 255, then one becomes 255. So basically you have a roster of zero and 255. So in that way, it's going to show up uh, in most uh, uh, image viewer. Otherwise, you might be very dark. The unique also, this one is by default is true because, as I said, it's going to segment the image into a binary. So it's going to be 0 and 1. So everything will be 1, and then all the objects will be just the same value. Sometimes it will be useful to have a unique identifier for each object. And so the unique, if you set to 2, it's going to start from 1, 2, 3, all the way to the number of objects. So in this way, it's better to easier to identify the object uh, on the imagery. So these are all the parameters. Again, we just click run. It only takes, I think, a couple seconds, uh, less than 10 seconds to run uh, this uh, imagery. Um, please be patient because on the right here, you can also see the GPU. So you see when it's running, right now we have a GPU of 15 gigabyte. So this is how much is being used. And if you're using that, <coughs> excuse me, running this one on a computer, if you don't have enough GPU, sometimes it might exit memory. You see, 13 seconds, uh, not too bad. And once you have the uh, do the segmentation, on the left side here, you see the mask.tif. Mask.tif basically the segmentation result. Um, again, uh, it just uh, depends on the parameter you specify. It might be a binary imagery 0 to 1 or 0 to 2 to 5, or it might be a unique identifier starting from 1. So once we have this one, then we can use the show mask. And you can specify a color map. So if you click, it's going to run show you, right? Pretty nice. It's pretty clean. And this is what it looks like after you do the segmentation, right? The background is black color. And so the unique identifier, so you see some of those white color means basically uh, when it's assigned the unique identifier, a uh, unique ID is starting from uh, it growing the area. So it's going to calculate, uh, get the area of each object. So the larger the area, uh, the brighter the color, uh, the smaller the area, the, 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 the darker the color. So this is actually pretty um, nice. And this is just the gray scale. If you want, you can also uh, show it in a random color. So this one here, we use this function. So a n n s a n n n s show the annotation. So the annotation basically is just uh, this object, but assign a random color to it. And we also set the axis off. Basically, we don't want to see the um, uh, um, uh, x and y axis. Also, the alpha. Alpha means 
the opacity basically uh, so if the zero basically is not it's fully opaque it's not transparent so the alpha is basically the transparency level also you can save the output so let's just run this one to see what it looks like we are going to basically export the image again earlier we already already have the mask but now we are exporting the annotation and the annotation is going to show above on top of the original set by imagery so you see here right we have all the color now it assigns a random color if you want some kind of transparency it's not like fully opaque you can change this one so i can do maybe three uh point four and it's going to uh again show the original center imagery and then show the annotation but it's going to somehow a little bit transparent so now you see uh it's you can see through the trees right you can see the color but the object is not very clear it's up to you what you want to use uh, again uh, i can change it back to this one if you want also once we have the annotation so we have the for example right now we have the original set time music we have the mask uh, basically the objects with um binary or unique values and then the annotation with random color so we can use the leaf map image comparison function uh, this is the one that i just added yesterday so basically it's just for this package uh, segment zero space so allow you to compare the images side by side so we can just run this one it's going to take the set imagery you can actually pass in any imagery uh, as long as they're the same size so we're going to have the set imagery on the left the annotation on the right you can also have a label if you want so take a look at this right pretty nice and right, because earlier we used the uh, set the uh, alpha to 0.4 if it's set to 1 uh, then it's going to show up fully um, in, uh, fully opaque but at least you can see compare right it's pretty cool also you have the label here uh, set like imagery right the label the, on the left also the label on the right and this allows you to compare imagery the result segmentation result easily this is just showing the result but uh, because the result the segmentation and also the um the raster the set like imagery everything is geo tip so they're actually um reference so you can overlay the images on top of the interactive map i think it's better to change this one back to one so that it's, uh, it looks better when i overlay on top because you can change the opacity directly on the map um so it's going to re-output the annotation it's a fully opaque so it looks like this then we can run this one here so again we're going to add this annotation on top of the satellite imagery so now we take a look All right so this is what it looks like right now on the map you can turn the oops uh i think i need to um sometimes the uh the map doesn't work very well let me let me do it one more time uh it's a little bit buggy on google collab uh, but if you do that on your local computer it should work better so let me recreate the map and then i can add the imagery so oops let me run this one again. So we create the map and then we add the base map uh, like this here. So in this way, the, the toolbar icon shows up. So uh, then later we can use this one to turn the layer on and off. Oops. Yeah. So we have the map now and then come back to here. Let's run this one. Okay. So now you have this one and you can use the uh, layer control here right the mask the image and the original uh setup base map right so here if you want you can turn the layer on and off and it should be interactive so if you want you can zoom in to anywhere you like for example here the lower left corner right so we have the segmentation result we also have the setup imagery the layer sometimes doesn't show up uh so Again, it's a little bit buggy on here. Uh, it's based on the visualization, but you can uh, download the imagery and then try this one on your local computer. It should be uh, much, much better. So again, right. So this is basically just a segmentation. Right now, it doesn't have any label yet. Uh, so I'm still working on adding the features. So if you want, you can uh, uh, start the repo. And so now I'm working on this one, trying to allow user to for example can select a point so you can um on the interactive map you can select the point you uh the, the object you want to extract and then the model automatically extract for example i place a point here 
is going to um, export uh, objects surrounding this one and it's, it's going to guess right different objects so this you're going to output three masks uh, and then you can pick which one you think is the uh, correct object again it's still work in progress and uh, you're welcome to try it out and after you do the segmentation you can also seg uh, convert the raster to vector data so here right this is just a, a segmentation with a random color and you can uh, convert the mask basically the unique identifier uh, the object with unique identifier to a vector data and you can refresh here right it can going to convert to a geo package or you can do for example a uh, set file dot ssp you can also export to geo station uh, exchange so you can export any vector data supported by um, geo pandas for example geo json and under the hood is being exporting to uh uh, geodata frame and then convert the geodata frame to any vector data format uh, you like so this is uh, the example she's using the all the default parameters so you can simply download the imagery for any location you like uh, try to a small area don't try too big and then you can run the um, um, the code to export uh, to do the segmentation and the uh, same model there's some uh, parameters that allow you to uh, fine-tune somehow but it's not like fully uh, customizable but at least you have some parameter if you want to customize uh, how many points you want to generate uh, 32 points 32 points by, by default and um, crop the layer downscaling and also I think the most ifs will, will be this one minimum mass region area so because otherwise you want to do the segmentation you're going to generate a lot of random sample uh, noise so if you want just on last object want to reduce uh, the pay so and paper effect you can uh, increase this number so by default it's 100 pixels and with this you will see it's pretty much the same as the previous example right except right now we add this one so the same uh, argument so now we can uh, specify these arguments to fine tune the model and then everything else pretty much remain the same so we're going to, we need to reinitialize the model uh, using the same model type and also the checkpoint but this time we're passing this uh, same arguments and once you have this it's the same procedure so i'm going to generate the imagery again it's going to take uh, about 10 seconds and then you can visualize you can show the annotation you can do the same uh, image uh, comparison and lastly there's another imagery uh, function here overlay images uh, this one doesn't show on, uh, doesn't work on google collab but if you try it on a local computer you will have something like this so you can generate image using a map probably and it's going to have a slider so that you can also change the opacity if you already use deep map, you probably don't need this because you can add the two data layers on uh, uh, um, the map and it can change the opacity interactively. But if you don't want to use deep map, then this function might be useful for you. You see it's still running because we fine tune the model, we provide the parameters. It's take a little bit longer. So this time it takes, uh, it took uh, 40 seconds. And once you finish uh, do the segmentation, you can join the result. So this one now looks like this. It's a bit different from the one you saw here, uh, if you can notice that, right? I think the object right now uh, is more uh, fine scale, so you have more objects compared to this one and this one here, right? So you can download images, you can do the comparison uh, if you want. Again, now we can uh, show the annotation. Uh, similarly, you can use the image comparison to show uh, the annotation if you like so you can change the slider so this time right now is the annotation uh, 2 so I'm going to show for example annotation 2 here so the image compare the images side by side and we also, we also have two masks in here right uh, mask 1 and also mask 2 so you can actually also use the uh, image comparison to uh, do the mask I'm, I'm not quite sure if it works RGB anyway so again so this is the new segmentation using the y2 model and the downside you cannot zoom in or zoom out uh, you can only uh, use this one to do a slider to do a quick check but if you want uh, more details you want to zoom into the map then you can use this way uh, it's probably it's better so they can zoom in and zoom out you can turn the layer on and off so, um, but if it is on google collab sometimes the tie layer uh, it takes some time to sort out Okay, so that's pretty much about this tutorial. Uh, shows you how to download the imagery, uh, set base map as a GeoTIFF, and then do the segmentation. And this is only the first step, right? So after you do the segmentation, you need to assign the label, the class right now. 
it has no idea about what its object it is and this is what uh, the feature that I showed you earlier that we allow you to pick the feature and then do the segmentation so in that way you know is this a uh, building, is it a tree or something else so hopefully uh, you'll be finished uh, implementation in the next couple of days and then can, uh, I will uh, produce another create another video tutorial showing you how to do that but for now at least you can get a nice segmentation um, and this is usually much better than traditional pixel based classification and it takes a much longer time this is pretty much using no training data you just input the imagery and then uh, initialize the same uh, class then you can just do the segmentation and then you can fine tune you can change the parameters if you like but uh, at least it looks very clean uh, very decent okay so that's all for this uh, video i hope you uh, enjoyed it i will see you next time take care bye bye